All right, unit six, we start talking about integration. Um, and this first one involves several different parts of that and also some old stuff from previous units. So um, we have this graph of f of t. And the situation is that a, a mechanic discovered that discovered a leak in a large fuel tank at noon, which is when t equals zero. Based upon gauges, which recorded fuel levels, he determined that the tank had already been leaking for an hour. He begins to work on the leak at noon. At 11 a.m., there were 5,000 gallons of fuel in the tank. The rate at which the amount of fuel in the tank changes at time t is modeled by a twi twice differentiable function f, where f of t is measured in hundreds of gallons per hour, and t is measured in hours. So this function f gives um, the rate at which the amount of fuel in the tank changes. All right, um, and we're talking about time between negative 1 and 4, so between 11 a.m. and 4 p.m. Um, the values of f of t are shown on the graph up, on the graph above. Sorry, values of f of t are shown on the graph above for selected values of t. All right, so for a, we're going to use the information above to find an approximation for f prime um, of negative five. And then we're going to show the computations that lead to the answer. And we need to make sure we indicate the units of measure and interpret the result in the context of the problem. So this is an old problem, um, th or this is old calculus that we have talked about before. So if we want to approximate f prime of negative, sorry, 0.5, then we're just going to use the slope formula. And so we're going to look back and see our information. So we are wanting to approximate the slope right here when x or t is negative 0.5. So what we would do is just use the points that are around it, so this point and this point, and use the slope formula. So we're going to do f of 0 minus f of negative 1 over 0 minus negative one. All right, and then looking back, f of zero looks like it is negative 15. And f of negative one is negative 20. And zero minus negative one is one. All right, so that's gonna give you five. All right, now if we just leave it as five, we are in trouble because um, it is not just five. So first, um, F is measured in hundreds of gallons per hour. And then when we do F prime, we're dividing by the independent variable. And the independent variable is T, which is measured in hours. So that is going to be 5. And we, we go ahead and do the original um, units, hundreds of gallons per hour. And then um, we divide that by another hour. All right, and then we do need to interpret the results um, so we need to think about what time that is. Um, so negative 0.5 is going to be 11.30 a.m. So at 11.30 a.m. The rate at which the amount of fuel in the tank
the tank is increasing at a rate of 500 gallons per hour per hour. Okay, let's look at a new one. This next one is actually um, new, the stuff we did in Unit 6. So same situation. We're going to use a left Riemann sum with three sub-intervals um, indicated by points on the graph to approximate the integral from negative 1 to 2 of f of t dt. And then same thing, we're going to use units and interpret what it means in the context of the problem. So we want to go from negative 1 to 2. And we want to use three sub-intervals, and this is a left Riemann sum. So I am going to go ahead and, and draw the rectangles. Now, if it's a left Riemann sum, then that means the left point of the rectangle is going to be touching the actual curve. So that's the left point. And we want three sub-intervals. So um, the, the distance here we're talking about is three, so each one is going to be one unit long. So there's one, there's two, there's three. Okay, so we're going to want to approximate that. Okay, so here we go. Negative one to two of f of t d Okay, so what we would use is the point on the left corner. So that first point is at negative 20. That's going to represent what's kind of the height. Um, we aren't finding area here. We're actually finding the integral, so we do use negative. And then we multiply that by the width of that rectangle, which from negative 1 to 0 is going to be 1. All right, and then plus, we'll go to the, the next rectangle. It's touching the corner at negative 15. And then we go to the third one that is touching the corner at negative 12. And then the width is still one. Okay, and then that's gonna be negative 47. Okay, and then remember that we need to use correct units. So this is a good review of your units. So when we do an integral, it is the opposite of what a derivative does with units. So we just did with the derivative. When we found the derivative, we divide by the independent variable. When we do an integral, we multiply by the independent variable. So what we have originally is hundreds of gallons per hour. And then what we'll do is multiply that by hour. so hours. So that's going to give you hundreds of gallons. Okay, now it is a negative amount of gallons. So that means that that amount of um, fuel has leaked out. So let's write um, an interpretation. So between, now our times are when t is negative 1 to um, 2. And, and that's fine if you want to represent it that way. Another way, which I kind of like better, is to say the time 11 a.m. and 2 p.m. But it's up to you. They're both perfect. The tank lost approximately <clears throat> forty seven hundred gallons of fuel. Okay, for C, same situation. Um, this time, we're going to evaluate um, the integral from 3 to 4 of f prime of t dt. 
Now this is the second fundamental theorem of calculus. So if, we, or the first or second, it doesn't matter uh, which one it is, but um, if we want to, I think actually we're going to kind of use both of them. If we want to find the integral of um, a derivative, I guess, then it just undoes it. So the integral of f prime of t dt is f of t. And then we're going to um, evaluate that from 4 to 3, or 3 to 4. So then we would use the fundamental theorem of calculus that tells us to subtract. And make sure we plug the top one in first and then the bottom one. And then we just go back to our graph of f, and we find f of 4 and subtract f of 3 from it. So that is going to give you negative 32.797. Now this tells us just to indicate the, the um, units of measure. It doesn't tell us to um, interpret anything. Um, but remember, this is f of t. This gives us f of t. And f of t is in hundreds of gallons per hour. All right, then one more. The leak temporarily stops at time t equals 2 and t equals 3.5. Um, and we know that because we have that the graph of f is 0. Between these two times, 808 gallons of fuel are added to the tank. We are going to write an expression using the integral to indicate the number of gallons at the it should be in the tank at time t equals 3.5. And then we're going to use the answer from part b to determine a numerical estimate of this integral. Okay, so what we want to find is f of 3.5. Actually, it's not f of 3.5 because f is the, so the number of gallons. All right, so what we'll do is we're going to take the amount that we started with at time negative 1 or at 11 a.m., which is going to be 5,000. All right, and to that, we're going to add the integral from negative one to two. So what's happening there? All right, and then to that, we're gonna add the amount that's added into the tank from two to 3.5. All right, so that's gonna be 5,000. And I do want to do minus because I found on part B that is, we lost 4,700 gallons during that leak. All right, and then it tells us in this problem during this time, 808 gallons of fuel was added. All right, so that is going to give us, ooh, that's going to give us 1,108 gallons of 